No, fruit is not optimal in the human diet, and neither is honey. Ooh, that would be on top of the something like 600 grams of other carbohydrates, mostly in the form of sugars that you're taking in, Paul. Try drugs and alcohol, they're great too. Wow, the amount of sugar going into this man's body in the last few years what actual level of proof of any of that can you bring to the table, Paul? Or is that just your opinion? You are not confident to talk about what there is in the studies. Not at all. You're done, Paul. You are absolutely, utterly finished in regard to any form of credibility in any field related to health or nutrition henceforth. Did you be, be my me, bro? Uh, I haven't seen this before. I had no idea what was just about to occur. Wow. Thanks for joining me once again. We're apparently Dr. Saladumbo is juicing now, but for some reason today's presentation will be brought to you by Beavis and Butthead. Anyway, let's hear it. An animal-based diet is centered around consuming the most optimal foods for humans. According to followers, that's meat, organ, fruit, honey. Dirt. No, nope, fruit is not optimal in the human diet, and neither is honey. Sorry about that. Honey and raw dairy. It's a no, dairy doesn't necessarily need to be raw, and dairy is also optional. Essentially like carnivore without the scurvy. Ugh. <sighs> Right, so it's scurvy though. Okay, good. We haven't heard that one before. I'm in Costa Rica with Dr. Paul Saladino to learn more about the lifestyle and why a guy with salad in his name doesn't have any. Oh, goodness, that's funny, isn't it? <laughs> DP for my bunghole. I'm excited, but I'm also scared because I feel like every food that I love, I'm going to have to hate it by the end of this. Uh, that's not the goal. That's, that's, not, not, that's not the goal. That's not the goal, no. I mean, I feel like that's more, that looks different than a, one of yeah, these. Yeah, I feel like in North America, like you get way thicker of a, the, 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 the rind. Yeah. yeah. One thing that I found out for myself over the years of dietary experimentation is that I do feel better with carbohydrates. Well, you know what? After many years of experimenting with alcohol and drugs myself, as a younger man, Paul, I find I feel better with drugs and alcohol. Does that mean I should do that? I had a period of... <laughs> Well, did you pull? Carnivore diet, or I was just eating meat. For a year and a half, right? Yeah. The reason I started that was because of my eczema. Eczema is like this itchy. That would be the eczema brought on by the plant material, Paul, would it? Okay, good. The bumpy rash, and it was on my knees and my elbows, and I just got kind of fed up. So I did my own sort of ultra elimination diet of just... All right, so now Paul Saladino is going to reduce the carnivore diet to just being an ultimate elimination diet. Wow. Still, that's not surprising. I mean, Paul gives credence to all sorts of craziness. I mean, he was even talking to Georgie Dumkoff the other day from the Pete Tard Society. Incredible. What's next? Meat, which is very extreme. And it... Oh, right. Now it's extreme. Okay, the carnivore diet is just an elimination diet and it's extreme. Good, Paul. Good, Paul. Wow. Everybody really does have their price, don't they? It really helped the eczema. There's a lot of people who have either gut issues, gas, bloating, constipation. These are looking well though, Paul. Or reflux, or rashes, or fatigue, or even depression, or anxiety, or sleep disturbance, or other autoimmune conditions, that they just kind of feel like this is just the way they're gonna live their life. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of those things- What you mean, according to a species appropriate, species specific diet, best conduced to the best likelihood of the best health and longevity profile it would seem. No, no, that's just extreme. These are probably fixable. Mm -hmm. I went to medical school. Yes, I agree. Medical school. My dad's a doctor. My mom. Hear the difference? I went to medical school and my dad's a doctor. I'm informed, reliably or otherwise, I don't know. Allegedly, Dr. Saladino, a Saladone, Salad I don't know, I mean, did indeed go to medical school and did indeed do a rotation in general medicine and then one for psychiatry. I think then thereafter he actually practiced medicine the exact same number of days as did one Michael Greger. So that's none, apparently. Is it your dad that told you to say that, Paul? Or did you call yourself a doctor, son? <laughs> Oh. Mom's a nurse. I got over-medicated as a kid. I got given Theodore, which was Theophylline, and a pill in my applesauce as a kid. I got forced to take inhalers as a kid. Yep. My parents are both super loving and super smart, and never did they realize that my asthma and eczema, those two things go together, could have been related to the foods I was eating as a kid. And I don't think everybody needs to eat like me. I just think that this way of eating is a good framework as a start.
a start for the most incredible glycation issues, if nothing else. And there'll be other issues, Paul, that will occur, but you're currently able to stave off because of genes, the environment in which you've placed those genes, both recently and historically, all sorts of extenuating other contributory factors to do with humans being so vastly complex and all of that. But those problems that will accrue to you on the diet that you are currently undertaking, at some point, Paul, you can take that to the bank. They will occur at some point. And there are those who might argue that comparing recent images in video format of yourself to even videos made just a couple of years ago, Paul, just anecdotes though. Tell us more about science and facts and things, Paul. Oh, man. So you eat like a full watermelon a day? I probably end up drinking the juice of a full watermelon a day. Ooh, that would be on top of the something like 600 grams of other carbohydrates, mostly in the form of sugars that you're taking in, Paul. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Cheers to a good day. Welcome man. to Costa Rica. <laughs> Bang hole. Good. Thank you. Wow. That's so good. Yeah, I've, ne I've never had that before. So good. It's so interesting. Am I gonna gain weight today? Try drugs and alcohol. They're great too. They're awesome. I feel like I'm gonna eat too many calories. No, bro. How many calories? Oh, Paul, you gotta stop that. And the speech pattern. That as well. But, you know, wow. The amount of basically sugar going into this man's body in the last few years. His physical activity level will also be helping to stave off the issues of all of that sugar in some regards, but not the glycation. Not the glycation, apparently. How you have a day? Like 3,000 to 3,500. Okay, no, you can't consume calories. That's a physical impossibility. Just the facts. Sorry about that. Calories are made manifest as photons. They cannot be bought to rest or go. You can't consume them. Sorry. And you say that shredded? Yeah. Shit. So it's really interesting because I think that... Well, why is that though? What goes on with the maintenance of Paul's physique? What would happen if he stopped doing that kind of level of physical activity? Which he will have to at some point because everybody does have to ramp it down at some point. What happens then if it hasn't already started? And apparently it has. When humans are metabolically healthy, when we get the bullshit out of our diets, when we get the garbage out of our diets, when you... That includes sugar though, Paul, as well, doesn't it? Yes. Eat more calories, your body just says... You can't eat calories still. Oh yes, it's a signal of abundance, your thyroid works more. That's about the mass of food and taken in the form that mass is in, be that carbohydrates, fatty acids, amino acids, proteins, alcohol. They will impact how the body uses that mass, sure, um, but it's nothing whatever to do with units of heat energy still. Your body temperature goes up, your resting metabolic rate goes up, and you just kind of like, you use all of that energy to do all the cellular repair and the rebuilding and the stuff that you- And to radiate more heat. Remember you said so yourself just then. And actually a body that's full of sugar is very likely going backwards in terms of its repair, Paul, not forwards, precisely because of the damage done to those tissues by that contraindicated unnecessary exogenous carbohydrate. You maybe weren't doing. Historically, humans have always eaten the whole animal. Who told you that? And historically meaning over what period? What actual level of proof of any of that can you bring to the table, Paul? Or is that just your, your opinion? They don't cut off all this fat. They don't cut off all this connective tissue. They're gonna eat all this. Yeah, but that's not the same thing as eating the whole animal, is it? Paul, no. Ears, noses, and assholes? Not that appealing. Guts and things? Doesn't do it for me. Visceral organs? Mm, not so much. Muscle meat and associated fat will do it. It's all you need. Everything you require is in that. It's what you actually did wrong, Paul, when you tried to be a carnivore, but you did it wrong and you never really were one. Yes, that's just a little joke. How often do you eat steak for breakfast, bro? <sighs> never. Sometimes. No, really? never. If, if it's like a treat, if it's like my birthday or something like that. Why does it have to be your birthday? I don't know. What do you do for your birthday? Do you go off like, do you have like a liver cake with like tallow can? I'd suggest Paul probably has a tremendous wank that day rather than just the normal standard Paul wank. Or something or what? Yeah, and basically, I mean, yeah, I can beat your meat if you want. You be, be yeah. my meat, bro. Right. <sighs> oh, I haven't seen this before. I had no idea what was just about to occur. Wow. Clearly, I'm reading the situation well, though. We kind of start our days the same way, I guess. <laughs> I bet you do. Yeah, it would seem that way. <laughs> 
Oh, right, baby. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Let's wow. Move, let's lower it for you. Make it easy. I call that back piece. That's what's up. Wow. Oh. Yeah, but then why spoil it with all that other fucking nonsense there? Look at that. After as several glasses of sugar, water, because that's pretty much all that's left when you juice, isn't it? Don't forget them vitamins, though. <laughs> Tee hee. What else have we got there? We've got some more sugar, some contraindicated fiber. Is that supposed to be sweet potato or something? So more contraindicated carbohydrate, more contraindicated fiber, probably a fair dose of oxalate that you really could do without. And then there's some green shit. Is that avocado, I'm guessing? The hell? And, and, and this is a plate of food that we're expected to believe is animal-based. Oh, okay. Look at the color of that strawberry. Yeah, you just yes, yes, because we're all short of colors in our diet, aren't we? I was just the other day looking at my blood results and it showed that I was definitely deficient in green. Put the saturation all the way up on that. I mean... There you go, that's your red taken care of for the day. You won't be deficient in red now. You will, however... I've had probably vastly too much carbohydrate and sugar. Some contraindicated fiber that may or may not cause a problem immediately or thereafter. And you'll have had your head filled with shit by a doofus. <laughs> oh my god. Isn't that like a strawberry? Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever tasted a strawberry? It's really I have not. But people say fruit, sugar. Fruit is the same as table sugar. What do you have to say about that? No, I don't it's know. not. Oh, no way. That's like saying like Zumba. Zumba classes is bodybuilding. Right? Exactly. Yeah. It's not yeah. The same. I mean, if you look at the, it's like so clear if you look at the medical literature. Uh, Paul, I've seen your attempts at looking at medical literature before, and your attempts to interpret that literature in anything like a manner that could be described as even remotely competent, and you failed absolutely, Paul. Completely. If people want to see me pulling Paul Saladino to bits on his attempts at looking at literature in the past, please be my guest. It's all on my channel. It's all there. Just look for Salad I Don't Know or something. No, it's Saladino. That's what you're looking for is your search term. Saladumbo. Wow, look at this. Look at this. There's a jar, half a jar of honey. Is that to be had with this meal as well? This meat-based meal? Is it? There is not a single study giving someone fruit or fruit juice that shows endothelial dysfunction or inflammation. In fact, the reverse. There's actually no study showing anything convincing about that aspect of anything under the influence, under decent control of any dietary factor of any kind, Paul. This is what I'm talking about. You are not qualified to speak about literature. You have never been a scientist or a physician, apparently. Not that a physician necessarily knows much about science anyway, because they're just an indoctrinated member of a professional practice who's taught to think a certain way and not how to think for themselves, generally. First. Orange juice improves endothelial function. No, 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 no. There is no evidence that that is so. Decreases lipid peroxidation, decreases oxidative mm -hmm. stress, decreases DNA. No, no, no. Oxidative stress is a construct. All the first thing you gave us there was a measurable physiological signal. But have you interpreted that correctly? No. Then you've given us the name of a construct and expected us to believe that you're talking about science. They damage watermelon juice, grape juice, pomegranate juice. So there's so many good studies with fruit. Listen, no, there aren't, Paul. See, that's what I'm talking about. You are not confident to talk about what there is in the studies. Not at all. I used to fear fruit, yeah. and then I was like, oh man, I was so wrong. Eat your fruit. <laughs> no, now you're wrong. You had it right in terms of the need for any plant material in your diet at all. Originally, what you had wrong was listening to that buffhead who was selling you the idea of the need for huge amounts of liver and liver supplements, of course, on top of that. The bloke who absolutely was not on the gear, remember him, Paul? The one that you believed was not on the gear because you're so credible as someone who understands physiology. You took one look at that bloke and said, no, you're right, you're probably not on the gear, didn't you, Paul? You had no idea, completely innocent of the fact that he was, in fact, on the gear, wasn't he? Remember that? Also remember those several videos that you and I made together when, well, before you lost your fucking mind? Remember that a few years ago? Now you don't even, you know, admit to actually being acquainted with me. Goodness gracious. Dear, oh dear. This looks like eggs, but... Is one of the artifacts of eating too much junk a loss of the capacity to remember reality, perhaps? But it's actually a grilled plantain. I just want to swallow that thing whole. Yeah, I put a little butter in there a for little, you. A little, a lot of butter. You were super a lot, of, a lot of butter behind the scenes. Man. No, bro, it was yeah. good for you, but it was raw butter. Ooh. Not combined with sugar, it's not Paul. Ever heard of the Randall cycle? Apparently not. Well, you have, only because I spoke about it, and then you completely misinterpreted the thing, and we spoke to an absolute imbecile like Georgie Dumkoff about it. A Peterian retard. A Petardian, even, if you like. You like that? Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, I like drugs and alcohol too. Does that mean it's a good idea? Still? And I've knocked up a potato. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Got some local raw kefir. This is goat's milk kefir. When I, heard, when I heard raw dairy, I thought we were like, going to get under an udder or something. Like, Well, we could. We could you, have you done that? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. Oh, sure. Kefir is fermented milk. This is local honey. Okay. So like it's all in the same jar because I just put it in glass. So, I mean, you'll probably freak out when I put this honey. I'll, I'll, I'll go easy on you with the honey. Flexing the freedom of not counting carbs there. <laughs> right, so you're done, Paul. You are absolutely, utterly finished in regard to any form of credibility in any field related to health or nutrition henceforth. Are we clear? Wow. I'm surprised you don't have like your own like cows out there. That's, that's maybe part of the plan. Yeah. I like you on a first name basis with Eli Milk. Damn, this is gonna be like an animal based like Dairy Queen Blizzard. I think it's 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 good shit, dude. It's shit. Kefir is fine, by the way, as long as it's something that agrees with you personally. But why would you pour honey into it? Goodness gracious. Oh. <laughs> Other than because you are a drug addict, and the drug in this case is sugar. Well, it tastes like goat cheese. A little a little sour for you. Oh, it gives me some sort of like a farminess. Really? Yeah. Well, it's a little goaty. I hate goats. I mean, I think I think junkie is a really apt analogy here, especially if you look at the behavior and you watch the mannerisms and the mode of speech and all of that. I think junkie is is on the mark. I like goats. They intimidate me a bit. Mm. Yeah, that's very intrusive. <clears throat> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna drink it though, but wow. <laughs> so what's your opinions on vegan diets? Mm. But yeah, who cares what Paul's opinion is on anything anymore? Seriously. Is anybody, well, I was, I'm gonna, I was gonna ask if anybody in the world is that fucking stupid, but clearly quite a few is the answer to my query. Wow. If you are prepared to listen to this buffoon any further on any topic, you deserve what you get. How's that? Bad idea. I'm putting you on the hot spot. Yeah, right? nutrient deficiency. Like, I love that vegans are thinking intentionally about the food they eat. I just think it's extremely hard, potentially impossible, to get everything you need to be an optimal human without eating animal foods. They're yeah, he's right about that, absolutely. But then he destroys his credibility entirely by basically tanking himself up on hundreds and hundreds of grams of sugar. There are so many nutrients in meat that are not found in plants. And you can take is that a question or a statement, Paul? A million supplements. I know a lot of prominent vegans do. And I know it's a statement and it's supposed to be a statement. It's correct. But why have you phrased it like a question? Why is everything a question, Paul? Still, not get everything that you're missing in meat. Yeah. Meat has 42,000 components. 42,000 components. Yeah. You said that, Paul, just now, remember? Uh, garlic, 4,000, meat. Like, food is so much more complex than we believe. According to whom on the basis of what? I think it's a folly to believe that we can take the value of a strawberry and put it into a multivitamin. It's so much more complicated. Does your multivitamin well, have- what value in the strawberry would that be though, Paul? Because a strawberry contains unnecessary contraindicated carbohydrate, unnecessary, apparently contraindicated fiber, possibly some vitamin that's not necessary. It's about it, some water. So what benefits? What, what value is there in that? Okay, I reckon we're done with this one. I think the main thing that he wanted to say there was eat tons and tons of sugar, boys and girls, it's great for you and you should do it too. All right, well, you're done, Paul, you're finished. You're now as laughable as that bloke from Canada. Incredible. All right, join me next time when someone will be wrong on the interwebs because it doesn't look like slowing down anytime soon, does it?